Well, uh, welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. Once again, your source for all of your chemistry explanations. Today's video is not a lecture, but a paper and pencil explanation uh, of a problem set in chemical reactions. It will be uh, chemical reactions worksheet number one right there at the top. Okay, um, so before beginning this problem set, I will make a few assumptions that you have one. Uh, watch my playlist in Honors Chemistry number seven, the Chemical Nomenclature Collection. In addition, I will assume that you know your periodic trends of ions and charges. You know your polyatomic ions and their charges. You know the nomenclature of binary covalent compounds. You know the nomenclature of ionic compounds, and you know the nomenclature of acids. Second um, is that um, the second playlist that I will assume you have watched is the Honors Chemistry 8, that is the Chemical Reactions Collection. From that video series, I will assume you know the five basic types of chemical reactions and you know your solubility rules and you know your activity series as well. So without further ado, let's begin with the chemical reactions worksheet number one a worksheet of which I have designed for the understanding and a comprehension of this unit in chemical reactions. So here we go. Here we got going on here. Uh, let's see. So this first one, it says a solution of sodium nitrate is added using a pipette to, a, to plumbus oxide in a test tube. Okay. So this word here, solution, is important. That, that uh, indicates that this is aqueous. And then um, it's added using a pipette, who cares about that? And in a test tube, who cares about that too? So really what we're interested in is a sodium nitrate and plumbus oxide. So first of all, sodium is right here and that's in um, the alkali metals and that therefore is a one plus charge. Plumbus, uh, there's lead, and there are two different charges of lead. Uh, there's a two plus and a four plus, and the it says that it's a plumbus, so therefore that's a lower charge of the two, and therefore it's a two plus charge. Oxide is right here, and that's a two minus charge, so that's where I'm getting that. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And then, um, so I have sodium um, that is uh, a one plus and nitrate, that's a polyatomic ion of one minus charge. And then plumbus, that's PB two plus and oxide, that's a two minus, just like I gave you just a moment ago. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the absolute value of these two numbers, flip the numbers, bring them down, and I get NaNO3. And following what this says, and that is solution, or you can follow your solubility rules, and that is anything with sodium in it is aqueous. Anything with nitrate is aqueous. There are no exceptions. So this is most certainly aqueous. Plus, and then we're going to take this 2 plus and this 2 minus. We're going to take the bull by the horns, flip, and bring it down. Effectively, that means that take these numbers, flipping them, bring it down. And then you have to reduce this. Um, when you can, you must reduce. So this um, PB, PB2O2 becomes just PBO, just like that, okay? And then um, we need to look at our solubility rules and figure out what is the um, state of matter of plumbus oxide. And so our solubility rule says that oxides are solids except for alkali metals or ammonium ions so therefore this is a solid like just like that all right now we need to figure out based on the reactants here what type of reaction this is and uh this is if it, it follows the basic trend of a cation anion cation anion and that means that this is a double displacement or a double replacement reaction so in order to come up with the products, we're going to take this cation, combine it with this anion, and this cation, and combine it with that anion, just like that, okay? So we're going to take sodium and the oxide, and we're going to get Na2O. We're going to do the same thing, absolute value of the numbers, take the bull by the horn, flip, bring it down. We're going to write the solubility um, rules for this one here, and this is aqueous because it has sodium in it, therefore it's aqueous. 
And then we're going to have lead two or plumbus nitrate. And so that's PB and NO3 in parentheses with a two on the outside. I'm gonna zoom on out here just a little bit and then slide this over so I can incorporate this whole thing here. And this is going to be aqueous as well. Okay, and there we go. All right, perfect. Um, why is it aqueous? Because it has a nitrate. All nitrates are soluble. There are no exceptions to that. All right, and uh, for a double displacement reaction, the, uh, the, the pattern is that you end up with a cation anion, cation anion, of which we already have right there. Now what we need to do is we need to balance this. It looks like we have two nitrates, two sodiums, and there's one on the reactant side. So I'm gonna place a two right there and bam, that's balanced. Fantastic. All right, let's move to the next one. The next one is silver iodide is transferred to a beaker containing an acidified solution, and it does say solution of ferric carbonate. So silver, that is a periodic trend charge. That is right here, they're silver. So silver, zinc, and aluminum, as well as cadmium. This forms a diagonal pattern. Silver is a one plus, zinc is a two plus, aluminum is a three plus, and cadmium and zinc are in the same column. So cadmium is also a two plus. What we're interested in right now is the silver, that's a one plus. So I'm gonna write silver, AG, that's a one plus. Then it's iodide. And iodide is right here, the iodide ion, and that is a halide ion, halogen that has a charge to it, so it's a halide ion. That's a one minus charge. So that is a I with a one minus. Then it says ferric carbonate, okay? And so this is also a periodic trend charge. So we have group one, um, that's one plus. Group two, two plus, three plus, four plus, five plus, Noted that, notice that the Roman numeral for five is V. So that's five. And now I'm going to count five elements, one, two, three, four, and five. These five elements have two charges, a two plus and a three plus respectively. Imagine that you're traveling along the highway and you see some lights behind you. Who is that? That's probably a copper. And that copper is gonna make you slow down. Notice that you've been traveling at a speed of two and three. So copper is a one plus and a two plus, okay? Um, so I gave you a lot more information than you needed for this particular problem here, but I just wanted to throw that out there. It says a ferric carbonate. So ferric, that is iron. Uh, the ick lets you know it's the higher charge of the two. So that means that this is a three plus charge for the ferric. So Fe three plus. And then carbonate is a polyatomic ion. You just have to flat out memorize that. That's CO3 two minus. And it does say that that's a solution. So that lets us know that it's um, aqueous. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do the same thing. Like what we did on the last one, we're going to take the absolute value of the charge values, and then we're going to take the bulb by the horn, flip, bring it down. We're going to get AGI, just like that. We're going to follow our solubility rules, and um, chlorides, bromides, and iodides, iodides are soluble, except for mercurius, plumbus, and silver. So that means that this is a solid. Plus, and then ferric carbonate, that is Fe2. CO3 in parentheses and a three outside. And it says it's a solution because it's acidified. So that's um, um, AQ. Otherwise, following solubility rules, that would be a solid if you were following those solubility rules. Okay, this problem here is also, um, it's a cation anion and a cation anion. Therefore, this is also a double displacement reaction. All right, so what we need to do is we're going to combine this silver with this carbonate, and then we're going to combine the ferric with the iodide right there. Okay, and let's give that a try. So we got silver carbonate, that is Ag2CO3. We're going to look at our solubility rules, and carbonates are insoluble except for ammonium ion and the alkali metals, of which silver is not, so therefore this is a solid. Plus, Ferric iodide, that's F-E-I and a three, and chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble except for silver, mercurius, and plumbus, and therefore this is aqueous, just like that. 
Um, and the pattern for double displacement is we have uh, California, that's a cation anion on the reactant side for both reactants and the same pattern on the product side, except we make that switch. Now what we need to do is balance this. In balancing, we typically follow uh, the rule of starting with the most difficult compound first, and that is this right here. We have two irons, we have one iron, I'm gonna place a two right here. We have three carbons, we have one carbon, I'm going to place a three right here. If you look, we have two times three, that's six iodines, and three times two, that's six silvers. So I'm gonna place a six right there. And then it's a pencil drop, and that is my answer. So hopefully that worked for you. Let's uh, move this on over here and go to the next one. Number three, it says isopropanol is poured. Okay, so isopropanol, that is C3H8O. And um, I'm hoping that you're familiar with isopropanol. It's isopropyl alcohol. And isopropyl alcohol is uh, one of those bottles that you have inside your medicine cabinet. And it's the same thing that they use to swab your arm before you get a jab. So this is a liquid. And it says on a watch glass, who cares, burned completely. So the burned completely, it just needs to say burn, doesn't say need to say completely, but burned completely means that this is a combustion reaction. So we're going to add molecular oxygen that is in the gaseous state. It's diatomic. And then we have an arrow with a delta. By the way, just to highlight which are the diatomics, the diatomic elements are N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2, and H2. It's these seven. Those are the diatomics. So when those elements are by themselves, they're in that diatomic format. Now, um, the combustion reaction is the easiest type to write the products for um, because we have um, uh, the products for a combustion reaction are always the same, and that is carbon dioxide and water. So we're gonna write carbon dioxide, and that's a gas, and water, that's H2O, and that's going to be a liquid, all right? Um, combustion reactions, we always balance in the same order, and that is starting with carbons, then hydrogens, then oxygens. In that order, we're gonna do CHO, C-H-O. Three carbons on the reactant side, three carbons on the product side, eight hydrogens on the um, reactant side and two over here. So we're gonna place a four, that would give me eight. Then the next process here is we're gonna count the number of oxygens that are right here. That's three times two, that's six. We're gonna count the oxygens right here. That's four times one, that's four. We're gonna add up those two numbers, that equals 10. So effectively what we have is that this arrow is an equal sign and we have 10 oxygens on the product side. We're gonna call X for the diatomic, plus there is one oxygen right in this formula right over here. So we're gonna solve for the value of what X is equal to. One plus X is equal to 10. What is X? X is equal to nine. Nine is an odd number, so we're gonna take nine halves as our fractional coefficient. And then we're gonna to have to multiply everything by two. We always multiply everything by two to get rid of this denominator of a two. So we will end up with a two, a nine, a six, and an eight for our uh, coefficients on that one. All right, again, combustion reaction. You always end up with the same products every single time. We're making an assumption that they are always complete combustions. The next one is number four. This is pellets that lets us know it's a solid. Sodium hydroxide transferred to an Erlenmeyer flask holding sulfuric acid. So again, I'm crossing out words that you really don't need. They're unnecessary. So um, you can just kind of ignore those. So hopefully that's helpful. All right, so uh, let's continue on here. So sodium is a group one. It has a one plus charge. Um, and that is Na1 plus hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. That is a one minus charge on that polyatomic ion right there. Okay. And let's see. Then what we have is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, sulfuric, if you ate too much, you feel icky. And that's coming from the sulfate ion. So SO4 
two minus, and all acids have hydrogens. So again, we're gonna take the bowl by the horns. We get NaOH, it says it's pellets, therefore this is a solid. And then H2SO4, and that's aqueous. And then um, in order to come up with the products, we're gonna take this cation, combine it with that anion, and then this cation, combine it with that anion right there. It doesn't matter the order in which you write them. So it's gonna be HOH, and you can write that as HOH, or you can write that as H2O, that's water, that's a liquid. And then the other one is sodium sulfate, and it's Na2SO4, and that is aqueous. Um, then what we need to do is balance this here. We have two sodiums on the product side, one sodium here, and we're going to place a two right there like that. And then we're going to look at the number of oxygens. There's two oxygens here, four oxygens here for a total of six. There's four oxygens here and one, so I need one more. So I'm going to place a two right there in front of the water, and then that one is balanced. Again, what I am not doing here, just like I mentioned on the very first worksheet, I am not um, adding up everything to make sure that it is balanced, but I am guaranteeing you that they are balanced. I'm going to leave you to make sure that they are balanced in the end. All right. So, um, oh, by the way, this is a double displacement reaction. There's the cation anion, cation anion, cation anion, cation anion. This is water written in the cation anion format. So um, there we go. All right, next one, number five. Number five, it says a small piece, sodium metal, is dropped into a beaker containing aqueous ferrous chloride. Okay, so sodium metal. That's Na, that's solid. That's an element in its standard state. Um, and then we have ferrous chloride. So I had mentioned earlier some of these periodic trend charges and ferrous is iron. There are two different charges for iron. There's the ick and there's the us. So this is the ferrous. And then the chloride is right here. That's a halogen, that's a one minus charge. So we have FeCl2, and that is aqueous because it says it's aqueous. Okay, what type of reaction is this? This is a single displacement reaction. It's classic single displacement reaction. That is how I have an element, and I have a California. Now, the element of which I have is a metal, which forms cations. Therefore, it will displace the metal or the cation. Then the iron will be all by itself. And iron, when it's all by itself, is a solid. Then the sodium and the chlorine um, ion, the chloride ion, are going to combine together to make the other compounds. So there's an element and a California. So sodium is a one plus charge. Chloride is a one minus charge. That is NaCl. And that is aqueous. Now what we need to do is balance this. I have two chlorines here on the reactant side. I have one on the product side. So I'm gonna place a two right here. That will be two sodiums. And now I'm gonna place a two right over here in front of the sodiums on that. All right. And then we're going to move this up just a little bit more so that we can see number six. Number six, it says four mils of sodium bromide. I'm gonna cross out the four mils of, that doesn't matter. Um, it's a solution, yeah, but you really don't need that because um, any sodium is uh, aqueous no matter what, okay? Um, it's transferred to a beaker containing five mils of phosphoric acid, okay? Phosphoric is coming from phosphate, so we need to know the phosphate ion. So we have sodium ion, bromide ion, so sodium is a uh, group one, um, element and bromide is a halogen, phosphoric acid, acids have hydrogens and phosphoric is coming from phosphate. So we're going to write the phosphate ion, that's PO4, three minus. So again, I'm gonna take the bowl by the horn, flip, bring it down. I'm gonna get NaBr and this is aqueous because it um, says a solution, but also anything with sodium is going to be aqueous. So we should be good to rock and roll on that one. Then um, plus um, H3P. 
PO4, and that's aqueous. Acids are aqueous. This is also a classic cation anion, cation anion, but this is also a double displacement reaction. Being that it's a double displacement reaction, the sodium is going to combine with the phosphate. The hydrogen is going to combine with the bromide. Okay, and I am going to get Na, Na3, PO4. Anything with sodium in it is aqueous. So there we go. And then it's going to be HBr, HBr, and that's also going to be aqueous. That this right here, HBr aqueous, is hydrobromic acid. Hydrobromic acid. Okay. It's following the classic cation anion. And now what we need to do is balance this. There are three sodiums on the product side. So we're going to certainly put three sodiums there on the reactant side. Um, three bromines on the reactant side and three bromines on the product side. And now that one is balanced. Pencil drop. Okay. Now we're going to go to the next one. And that's number seven. It says a solution of a uh, so solution. Aluminum sulfate is added to an aqueous calcium hydroxide and in a round bottom flask. So aluminum is a three plus ion. Sulfate is a two minus polyatomic ion. Again, remember aluminum is a periodic trend charge. That's a one for silver, two for zinc, three for alu aluminum, bingo. That's what I was looking for. And then calcium is a group two, so it's a two plus charge. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, one minus charge. This is also going to be a classic double displacement reaction. So I'm gonna take the bull by the horns and flip these two numbers. And therefore I get Al2SO4 in parentheses with the three outside. It says it's a solution, so I'm gonna write aqueous, perfecto. And then we got um, calcium hydroxide. And that also says it's uh, aqueous for that one uh, solution. So that's CaOH and A2. And that's going to be aqueous. So classic uh, cation anion, cation anion. And again, like I said, that is a double displacement reaction. So I just want to make sure that this is one of the most common errors. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, talking too much, too fast here. Hold on just a second. All right, there we go. <clears throat> um, it's very common not to have the parentheses incorrectly on the hydroxides. But when you have more than one hydroxide, like in this case with this two, you need the parentheses, okay? All right, double displacement. So we're going to combine the aluminum with the hydroxide. <laughs> and the calcium with the sulfate. So aluminum, hydroxide, and again, you're gonna need the parentheses around this one. <clears throat> you're gonna follow solubility rules and hydroxides are insoluble except for ammonium ion and group ones of which this is not, so this is a solid. And then calcium sulfate. So calcium sulfate, calcium has a two plus, sulfate has a two minus, so both of those are going to be reduced. Now, calcium sulfates, so sulfates um, are aqueous, except for barium, strontium, lead, and calcium. And so calcium is slightly. So this could be either aqueous or a solid. It really depends on other factors of which we are not getting into in this class. So don't worry about that. This is cation, anion, cation, anion. Now we need to balance this. Um, like I said in one of the previous videos, the balancing is always going to start with the most complex formula with the most number of atoms elements in it. So this has two aluminums. I'm going to place a two in front of the aluminum hydroxide. This has three sulfurs. I'm going to place a three in front of the uh, calcium sulfate and then three calciums and now three calciums and now bingo. That one is balanced as well. All right. <clears throat> seven into this and we have many, many more to go. So hopefully you're holding on tight. Here we go. You ready? I'm going to uh, switch the page here. So I need to change my page. Obviously you're watching the crazy hat chemist. Watch my videos on YouTube. If you don't mind, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I'm always looking for more subscribers and whatnot. Okay, here we go. 
Next problem is shavings of magnesium. So shavings indicate that it's a solid and that's magnesium all by itself. So that's Mg and that's going to be a solid. Is outer is, excuse me, is added to powdered, that is also indicating that it's a solid, ferric oxide and warmed slightly. Okay, all right, so ferric oxide, uh, ferric is Fe3 plus, oxide is a two minus, and we have already discussed both the ferric, and I'll just uh, go over that again. There's iron, the ferric is the three plus, and the oxide is the two minus. Both of those are periodic trends. I'm gonna take the bull by the horn, flip, bring it down. I'm gonna get Fe2O3, and it says it's powdered, so that means that this is a solid. So question, is there any water in this problem? No, there isn't. So that means I'm really not looking at solubility rules here whatsoever on this problem. In order for me to be looking at solubility rules, um, the compounds or the elements actually need to be in solution. So they are not. This is a classic single displacement reaction. Since magnesium is a metal which forms cations, it's going to displace the iron, which is the metal that um, which is an is a cation which forms metals. So Fe, Fe now is a solid and that's by itself. Now magnesium is in group two. So it has a two plus charge to it and we already know the charge on the oxide. So we're gonna combine the magnesium and the oxide together and that will be MgO. It's a Mg2O2, but it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So it must be reduced. When you can reduce, you must reduce. This is also a solid. Again, we are not following solubility rules here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we have the most complicated formula. This is two irons. I'm gonna place a two in front of the iron. I have three oxygens. There's one oxygen, three oxygens here, three magnesiums, and now three magnesiums there. Hopefully that worked out. All right, number nine. Number nine, number nine, number nine. Okay, it's a joke from an album. It says aqueous ammonium hydroxide is added via a burette to a flask of sulfuric acid. Okay, so aqueous means that it's in solution, although you didn't actually need the word aqueous because anything with ammonium ion is certainly aqueous. So this is ammonium ion. It is the only polyatomic cation that there is, and then hydroxide. Um, okay, fantastic. I'm just gonna move my mouse off to the side there. Uh, so ammonium hydroxide, hopefully got that. And sulfuric acid, that's ick is coming from eight. Therefore, I need to write the sulfate ion. There's the sulfate ion. And then I have a hydrogen for all acids. So ammonium hydroxide, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's NH4OH, that is aqueous. And then sulfuric acid, that is H2SO4. And that is aqueous. This is also classic double displacement reaction, cation, anion, cation, anion. Yes, perfect. Okay, so that means that the sulfate and the ammonium ion are going to get together and the uh, hydroxide and hydrogen are going to get together on the product side. So we are going to have ammonium sulfate. Ammonium ion is a, ammonium ion is a one plus and sulfate is a two plus. Um, Minus. So that's why uh, that goes like that. And anything with ammonium ion is aqueous. So that's aqueous. And then plus HOH or H2O, and that is water, and that's going to be a liquid. Then we need to balance this. I'm going to start off with this here, the ammonium sulfate. I have two um, ammonium groups or two nitrogens. I'm going to place a two right over there like that. All right. Um, now, the next one is going to be balancing the hydrogens and the oxygens. And so this always seems to be a complicated one for some students. But um, what we see is oxygen, 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 oxygen. There's oxygens in every formula. So I would refrain from looking at the oxygens. What I'm going to do is kind of put my hand over the ammonium sulfate and not look at this. Um, what I'm going to do is count up the number of hydrogens on this reactant side. Two times four, that's eight, plus two, that's 10, okay? And then two more over here, okay? Does that make sense? So eight 
uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so that's a total of 12 hydrogens on the reactant side. Over here, I have eight plus two, that's only 10. I need two more. So I'm gonna place a two right over there in front of the water. And that will balance it. Um, uh, you do need to check to make sure that everything else is balanced on your own. That's up to you, okay? Just like I said before, so. All right, next one, number 10, is solid uh, aluminum oxide. So aluminum is a three plus charge. Oxide is a two minus, and it says it's heated in a crucible in the absence of air. So I'm gonna have Al2O3. It says that it's a solid, it's heated in a crucible. So it's heated, that's important, in a crucible, who cares, in the absence of air. And the absence of air lets us know that there is no other reactant. So this is going to be a classic decomposition reaction. So on a decomposition reaction, I am going to get a gas and a California or a gas and an element, okay? So the gas that I get, I'm look at this and do I see, what do I see? I see oxygen, so I'm gonna get oxygen. So the formula for oxygen is O2, that's molecular oxygen, that's diatomic. And I'm gonna try to come up with a cation. Now it just so happens that aluminum has only a single charge of a three plus for an ion. It has no other ion charge. There are no other elements in here. So what's gonna happen is that I'm going to have a aluminum metal all by itself because there is no other compound that I can make as a cation anion with this one. All right, now we're gonna balance this. Um, I have three oxygens, two oxygens. The greatest common factor here um, is six. So that will be a three in front of the oxygens. That will give me six oxygens. A two in front of the aluminum oxide. That's six oxygens. Now I have four aluminums. And now I have four aluminums as well on the product side. All right, hopefully that's okay. All right, let's just take a giant breath here. Get a little sip of water. We've gone through 10 problems. And we have a number of uh, problems to go. So we're gonna move this up and here we go. Perfect. Number 11, it says chemistry teachers like to fish by throwing a block of sodium, block, sodium into a river. Okay, and then it says, hint, write the reactant as a California. Well, you can't write sodium as a California, but you can certainly write the other one as a California. So block of sodium, that is sodium as an element all by itself, that is a solid. Um, and then the river would be water. What's the formula for water when it's a California? That is H-O-H, -H, and that is in the liquid state. That's not following solubility rules, by the way. This is a single displacement reaction, okay? And I'm gonna underline the cation, put a squiggly underneath the anion so that you can see that as this single displacement reaction goes, the sodium will displace the cation. And now you will have hydrogen all by itself because hydrogen is a diatomic, that's why that's a two. And the standard state of hydrogen is a gas. This also hopefully uh, enables you to see that the sodium is going to combine with the hydroxide. Sodium is group one, that's a one plus charge. Hydroxide is a one minus charge. And there we go, there's my formula. Um, anything with sodium is aqueous, so this is aqueous. Perfecto. Now what we need to do is balance this. All right, so uh, one sodium, one sodium, one oxygen, one oxygen, and if it uh, helps you, you can write now the formula for water as H2O. It really doesn't matter, okay? But um, that's where you see the one oxygen, one oxygen. And right now, you should see that uh, the number of hydrogens is two on the reactant side and three, that's two plus one. So what I want to do is put a fractional coefficient in front of the uh, hydrogen, and now the equation is balanced because I have two hydrogens on the reactant side and now I have one with the fractional coefficient of a half plus one, that's two. Now I'm gonna multiply everything by two. So when my ending coefficients are gonna be two, two, this will become one and then two. Pencil drop, I'm done with that one. That was a single displacement.
Cool. All right, the next one is number 12. It says powdered. That is letting us know that this is um, a solid, okay? So powdered chromic carbonate is heated in an evacuated oven. So this is also going to be a um, decomposition reaction. It's heated in an oven. It's the oven is evacuated. That's letting us know that there is no other reactant. Okay. All right. So chromic, that is CR with a three plus, and this is actually a periodic trend. Okay. And that is chromium right there. The ick is the three plus charge. And then carbonate is a polyatomic ion, CO3 two minus. So it's CR two parentheses, CO3 parentheses and a three outside. It's powdered, so it's solid. It's heated in an oven. So there we go. This is a decomposition reaction. So on decomposition reactions, you typically get either oxygen, carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide. Okay, there are other possibilities, but these are the ones that we are covering here. Um, is there sulfur in here? No, is, so that cannot be sulfur dioxide. There happens to be carbons and oxygen, so bingo, that is the gas. So decomposition reactions, you end up with a gas and more than likely a California. Okay, the gas is carbon dioxide, and now I need to come up with the California. The California is, I'm gonna take the chromic, that is my metal, and I need to combine that metal with, uh, in order to get a California, I need a cation, which is a metal, and I need an anion. And the only other anion is the oxide ion. So I'm gonna have chromic oxide. And since there is no water in this, this does not follow solubility rules, and that means that this is a solid right there. All right, and so let's see, there's uh, three carbons and there are three carbons and bingo, everything else is balanced, two chromiums and um, the number of oxygen, six plus three over there. Okay, that's nine and we got nine oxygens there, boom, done. All right, perfect. All right, let's scoot this one up um, and we'll do number 13. It says one gram shavings, that shavings indicates the state of matter, that's a solid are dropped into a beaker containing uh, two molar phosphoric acid. This isn't the first time that we did phosphoric acid. We've done phosphoric acid before, and we've done calcium hydroxide before. So I will assume that you know that calcium is a group two. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion of a one minus charge, and that is a two right there like that. It says that it's shaving, so this therefore this is a solid right there like that. Okay, and then... Then what do we have? Phosphoric acid, that is uh, phosphate, which is PO4, three minus, so that is H3PO4, and that is aqueous. This is a classic uh, California, California. This is a double displacement reaction. So the calcium and the phosphate we're gonna get together, that's calcium phosphate, PO4, and the two, okay? And what we need to do is look at our solubility rules for this. And um, phosphates are insoluble except for ammonium ion or um, uh, uh, alkali metal. So therefore, this is a solid. Plus the um, um, hydrogen and the hydroxide, and that will form water over there. And that's a liquid. All right, now what we're gonna do is balance this. We're gonna look for the most complicated formula and that is right here with the calcium phosphate. There are three calciums. That's now three calciums. There are two phosphorus. Now there are two phosphorus, okay? And now what we wanna do is find out how many um, oxygens we need. This is very similar to, um, I think we did another problem number nine earlier up there. It's, it's very similar to number nine. There's oxygens in every single compound, but not hydrogens in this one. And if I change this one stoichiometric coefficient right here in front of the calcium phosphate, I'm gonna have to change this three and that two. So I'm gonna count up the number of hydrogens. How many hydrogens here? Two times three, that's six. How many hydrogens here? Three times two, that's six. So that's a total of 12. So I need to place a six here because that will give me six times two. That is 12. Cool. Hopefully you got that.
All right, let's move this up, scoochie this up here, and bingo. There we go. Number 14 is our next one. We are moving here, folks. Hopefully, hopefully you're still with me. Don't go away. Okay, it says an aqueous aluminum sulfite. So aluminum is a periodic trend charge. I've gone over that one before. That's a three plus sulfite. That's SO3 two minus. Okay, that's a polyatomic ion. It says aqueous. So Al2 parentheses SO3 parentheses and a three, and that's aqueous. Um, is added dropwise to a solution of calcium hydroxide. So that also tells you that it's aqueous. Calcium hydroxide is something that we've done at least before. In fact, wait, we did it on the previous problem right above there. So calcium is a group two hydroxide is a polyatomic ion of a one minus charge. And that's a two right there. It says it's a solution that's aqueous. And this is also a double displacement CA, CA. We're going to get California's on the product side. The aluminum is going to get together with the hydroxide. I'm going to have aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum is a three plus. That's why that's there like that. Um, hydroxides are insoluble except for ammonium ion and the alkali metals of which this is not. So therefore this is a solid. And then the calcium and the sulfite are going to get together. They have the same charge of a two plus and a two minus. So therefore CaSO3, and that's going to be, um, uh, just like that. This is aqueous here. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to balance this. This aluminum sulfite is the most complicated formula. There are two aluminums. I'm going to place a two in front of the aluminum hydroxide. There are three sulfurs. I'm going to place a three in front of where the calcium sulfite is. There are three calciums and now three calciums and bam, I'm done. Done. Whew. All right. Let's keep on going. A flask containing a molecular nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen. Nitrogen is an element that is diatomic. So that is molecular nitrogen. That is a gas. Is opened um, and, uh, and powdered magnesium is transferred to it. Powdered magnesium. That means that's a solid. Okay. Um, this is a combination reaction. So a combination reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to look on our periodic table. We're going to find magnesium. Magnesium, okay, is a group two. So it's a two plus. Nitrogen is a three minus charge. So I'm going to put the magnesium first because it's the cation. The anion is the nitride. And I'm going to take the bowl by the horn, flip, bring it down. I get Mg3N2. Um, Okay, this is not following solubility rules because there's no water in this. Okay, so imagine this. You take a gas and you take a solid and um, you combine the two things together. Do you get something heavier? Yeah, so therefore this is a solid. There's more to it than that, but I am just trying to, you know, get you to the end. Okay, there are two nitrogens, two nitrogens, three magnesiums, three magnesiums. Boom, done, baby. Okay, next one, I'm going to slide this up here. And here we go. Um, sulfur trioxide. Okay, so sulfur trioxide. This is a binary covalent compound because it has prefixes. So sulfur, oxide, tri. It says it's bubbled. That lets you know it's a gas. Into a cup containing water at room temperature and pressure. Water, H2O. That's a liquid. Boom. Okay. This is not a double displacement. Why is it not a double displacement? Because this is not a California. This might be in the California, but this is a binary covalent compound. This SO3 right over here, sulfur trioxide, that's a binary covalent compound. This is a combination reaction. So if you look at my lecture, there are two different kinds of combination reactions. This is the special combination reaction. And this special combination reaction, you're going to have the hydrogens, the non-metal, and the oxygens in that format. So I'm going to follow this format. And it's going to be H, S, and an O. How many uh, hydrogens on the reaction side? Two. How many sulfurs on the reaction side? One. How many oxygens total? Three plus one. That's four. This is aqueous right here like this. Now, this is a very unusual reaction, but it can happen. It's one of the ones 
that you don't need balancing because it is balanced already. You should be able to name this acid, that's H2SO4. This is coming from the sulfate ion. So this is sulfuric acid. It is not hydrosulfuric acid. It is sulfuric acid. All right, another page for me. Just reminding you, I am the crazy hat chemist. Watch my videos, por favor. And oh yeah, please subscribe. Tell all your friends. If you know anybody that's doing chemistry, tell them too. To subscribe, watch my videos, have a party. Okay, all right, here we go. Next one, um, that was 16. Now we're doing 17. We are, we, are, we are moving slowly, but I think quickly at the same time. Number 17, it says 25 grams of potassium chloride is heated, okay, by a Bunsen burner in a vacuum. The vacuum uh, doesn't matter if it's a Bunsen burner or not. The vacuum lets us know you're not using a vacuum cleaner like at home. Oh, no, no, no. The vacuum means that there is no air, okay? All right. Potassium is a group one. Chlorate is a polyatomic ion, ClO31 minus. So this is KClO3. This is a solid. There's an arrow. There's a delta because we're heating it up. Do you see that there's one reactant on this? Absolutely. So that means that this is a decomposition reaction. Decomposition reaction. All right. All right, cool. So what we need to do on a decomposition reaction is decomposition reactions typically have a gas and a California. So I need to find a gas. What's the gas? Uh, my gas options here are the following. So I got oxygen, carbon dioxide, or sulfur dioxide of the problems that we're doing here. And I don't see any carbons. No, that's a chlorine. Um, no, I don't see any sulfurs. Nope. So therefore it's oxygen gas. And then I'm going to find a California. So the charge on the potassium is a one plus. Charge on a chloride is a one minus. So I'm going to do potassium chloride. And oh, by the way, is there any water in here? No, I'm not looking at solubility rules. So this is a solid. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Now we need to balance this. We're going to go for the most complicated formula. There are three oxygens here, two oxygens here. The potassiums and the chlorides are balanced. Okay, so you could use a three halves fractional coefficient in front of the oxygen, or you can say three and two, and that balances out the oxygens. Now you got to balance the potassiums and the chlorines. Cool. That is number 17. All right, now we're going to go for number 18. It says 10 mils of benzene. I really don't know what benzene is, but I do have that formula, so that's a benefit. It's poured on the lab bench and lit with a match um, that's thrown on it. So C6H6, okay, is poured. That means that this is a liquid, okay, benzene, and it's lit with a match. So that means that this is a combustion reaction. The other reactant that is necessary, absolutely necessary for combustion is molecular oxygen. That's a gas. There's an arrow, a delta for every combustion reaction. Every combustion reaction, you have carbon dioxide. That's a gas and water. And that is a liquid. Fantastic. You balance combustion reactions, carbons, hydrogens, oxygens in that order. Whew. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna use black here to begin with here. Six carbons, six carbons. Six hydrogens, three times two, that's six hydrogens. I'm gonna look at the number of oxygens here, that's six times two, that's 12. Three times one, that's three. I'm gonna add those up and that is the magic number 15. Do I have any oxygens here in this formula where the benzene is? No. So all the oxygens are right here. 15 is an odd number, so I'm going to use 15 over 2. I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So my ending coefficients are a 2, a 15, a 12, and a 6. Oh, yeah. You know how fast that was? That was super fast. Hopefully you can do it that fast, too. Not too bad. You can do it. I know you can. So that's number... 18. I think we are halfway done right now with the regular types of reactions, not on the net ionics, of which there are 10 more after this. So we need to keep on plowing on. Just, you know, breathe slowly and we're going to make it. I know we are. Here we go. Alchemists use um, mercuric oxide in minerals to heat 
in a furnace in the absence of air. Oh, there we go. Absence of air again. Mercuric. Mercuric is HG2 plus. Oxide is a two minus, just like that. So I'm going to have HGO, okay? Mercuric oxide, and it's in minerals. So this is a solid and it's a decomposition reaction because it says the absence of air. Okay, and what am I looking for? I'm looking for a gas. The only gas that I can potentially get here is molecular oxygen, all right? Now, there are other charges to mercury, but mercury is a very special beast, so you're gonna know this one now. And um, uh, mercury has is a liquid at room temperature and pressure. So that means that you're gonna remove all the molecular oxygen and what's remaining is mercury, and that is a liquid. And now I need to balance this. Uh, there's two oxygens, one oxygen, two, and a two. Bingo, decomposition, check, done. Okay, perfecto. Now we're gonna move this baby up. No, nope, we're gonna move it up. Uh, up, 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 up. There we go. <laughs> Corrosion occurs when aluminum metal, metal, is placed in a solution of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is always um, a solution, anyways. Aluminum. Aluminum, that has a zero charge. Therefore, it's a solid plus sulfuric acid. That's coming from the sulfate ion. That's H2SO4, and that is most certainly aqueous. <sighs> okay, this is a single displacement reaction. That's right, folks, single displacement reaction. So this aluminum is going to displace the cation, which is hydrogen, and that forms hydrogen, which is diatomic. That's a gas. By the way, that two has nothing to do with this two. This two is there because sulfate has a two minus charge. This two is there because this is molecular hydrogen. This is diatomic, that's why. Now you will have aluminum, which is a three plus charge combined with sulfate, which is a two minus charge. So Al2 parentheses SO4 with a three outside. Okay, hopefully that looks good. Um, and then this is a sulfate and sulfates are aqueous except for barium, strontium, lead, and calcium. So therefore this is aqueous. I'm gonna start with the most complicated formula. That's two aluminums and three sulfurs. So two aluminums and three sulfurs, just like that. Now we need to balance the hydrogens. There are no hydrogens except here and just here. So that's three times two and then, oh, wait. Three times two, perfect. All right, we're looking good now. Yeah. Okay, let's keep on going, baby. All right, so acetylene, torches, burn at the hottest temperature of any of the fuel gases. Okay, so acetylene, C2H2, this is a gas, okay? I don't know if you've heard about acetylene torches. Maybe you look it up online or something like that. So look up acetylene torches. They burn super hot. So it burns. So that means that this is a combustion reaction that requires molecular oxygen and an arrow and a delta and carbon dioxide gas and water that's, um, we're going to say, a liquid. And I wouldn't mark you off if you put the um, water as a gas on this one because um, this is so darn hot. So again, the same rules, carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, in that order for every single combustion reaction, two carbons, and uh, we're gonna end up with two carbons right there. Two hydrogens, the hydrogens are balanced. Whoa, that's pretty nice. Okay, how many oxygens right here? Two times two, that's a four. How many oxygens right here? That's one. So four plus one, that's five. That's an odd number. That's gonna be five halves. Now I'm gonna multiply everything by two. So this will be two, this will end up being five, this will be four, and this will be two. And then I am done. All right, with that problem, that is. I'm gonna move this up and here we go. So now we are on to number 22. I'm gonna change color pins here. I'm gonna go for a black pen. I'm getting tired of the blue one. Okay, and it says chemists make silver Christmas uh, chemists make a silver Christmas tree by adding silver nitrate, silver nitrate to copper wire. 
Okay, so copper wire, that's Cu, and that is solid. And silver is a one plus cation, and nitrate is a polyatomic ion. So it's A, G, N, O, three. All nitrates are aqueous. This is a single displacement reaction. This copper is going to displace the silver. And what you end up getting is silver that's a solid all by itself. And then the copper and the nitrate are going to get together. Now, um, I know this can always be a confusing thing, but then when you have two charges on some elements, there is a most stable charge of the double charges. And for copper, that most stable charge happens to be a two plus charge. So that's why this is gonna be a two plus charge and not a one plus charge. You are learning that right now if you didn't know that before. But that's CuNO3 with a parentheses and a two. And that is also aqueous, okay? And now what we need to do is balance this. There are two nitrogens and I'm gonna put a two right there for the nitrogens. There are two silvers. I'm gonna put a two there for the silvers and boom, we're done. We're looking good. All right, number 23, it says home barbecues use propane, C3H8 fuel to cook food. Okay, so we're gonna cook, we're gonna burn this stuff. So C3H8, you guys know that a uh, propane stove, that's a gas that's inside there um, that's burning. It might be liquefied propane because it's compressed, but that's a different story, but it is a gas. Plus, since it's a combustion reaction, O2, molecular oxygen, arrow with a delta, carbon dioxide, gas, and water, that's a liquid. All right, and then we're going to balance this in the same order that we balance everything else. That's three carbons, and oh, now we have three carbons, eight hydrogens, and oh, now we have four times two, eight hydrogens. We're gonna count up the number of oxygens, that's three times two, that's six. And that's four times one, that's a four. Plus, add them up, I get 10 oxygens. Are there any oxygens here? That's a nope. So I got 10 on the product side. I'm gonna place a five right over here. And now that one is balanced. That is another combustion reaction. All right, the next one is going to be number 24. I'm gonna move this up here. All right, cool. Calcium pellets, that lets us know that calcium is a solid. React slowly to cold water, but more vigorously to hot water. So I don't know if you remember problem number 11, but you're gonna go look at problem number 11 first, and then this problem is very similar to problem number 11, just a slight deviation. So that is, we're gonna write water as HOH, it's a liquid. This is a single displacement reaction. Why am I writing water as HOH? That way I can clearly see the cation and the anion, of which I've underlined the cation and squiggled the hydroxide um, anion. Calcium is a metal that forms cations. It will displace the hydrogen. Hydrogen is diatomic. It's a gas. Then I'm going to have calcium, which is a group two, plus two, combined with this hydroxide, which is a polyatomic ion of a one charge. And I'm going to get calcium hydroxide. And most certainly, yes, you do need the um, per, uh, parentheses with that right there. Okay. And then hydroxides are, well, they're insoluble. Um, you could have put this one as aqueous and that would have been okay. So either one, it really doesn't matter. This is in water. It does follow the solubility rules of having hydroxides being um, solids um, uh, that are not group ones, that is alkali metals or ammonium ion. But there are issues with this one. We'll just let that one fly. We do need to balance this, or we always think we need to balance these things. And um, so what you can do to help you balance it, we're going to write water as H2O, okay? And so one calcium, one calcium, two oxygens, one oxygen. So therefore, I'm going to place two right there. And then boom, it's done. It's balanced. And then we are going to go on to the next problem, which is number 25. Perfect. All right, number 25, there is a violent L reaction when aluminum foil, that means if the foil, that's a solid, is added to a test tube con containing bromine at room temperature. So aluminum, that's a solid, plus bromine, 
Hopefully you know that bromine is one of those diatomics. So it's Br2. And bromine is a liquid. All right. All right. Fantastic. All right. And then uh, this is a combination reaction. So aluminum on the periodic table for its periodic trend charge is a three plus. Bromide is a one minus. So I'm going to get aluminum bromide, ALBR3. And this is going to be a solid there like that because there's no water. It's liquid bromine. There's no water. So I'm not even looking at solubility rules here. Okay. Um, I got two bromines and three bromines. So um, greatest common factor. This has come up multiple times within this problem set even. So multiple times, this is going to be a two. That's a three. Uh, the multiple times is the two and the three, the two and the three, the three and the two. Okay, I got two aluminums, two aluminums, okay? All right, we are done with number 25, and uh, I think we're going to the next page. Another little advertisement here. The Crazy Hat Chemist, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. All right, anyways, watch my videos, man. All right, love you. Here we go. Let's keep on going. Okay, so next one. Bottles of hydrogen peroxide are brown, limiting the exposure to sunlight, which speeds the reaction. Hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen is an H and a 1 plus. Peroxide is O2, 2 minus. So hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, and that is a liquid. Okay, so this reaction... Um, is going to go with an arrow like that. And you can write either an, a delta, because that would be consistent with all our other decomposition reactions, or you can write light here, because it's really the exposure of light or a little bit of heat that makes this hydrogen peroxide decompose. So again, with a decomposition reaction of ones that we have been following, we get either oxygen gas, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide gas, sulfur dioxide gas. I don't have sulfur, I don't have carbon. So therefore I'm gonna get a molecular oxygen gas. And then I'm gonna try to get a California out of this. And my California is going to be a hydrogen and a hydroxide. Where do you get that out of there? I, it's just hard to see, but I guarantee you, if you take a bottle of hydrogen peroxide, which should be in your medicine cabinet, the brown bottle, um, then you should see that that is actually HOH and that is water that is left in that bottle of hydrogen peroxide over time. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, very similar to a previous problem in terms of balancing at this point in time. And I have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two oxygens and two plus one, that is three oxygens on the product side. So I could do a fractional coefficient of a half and then multiply everything by two. And then I have my balanced chemical equation right there. Fantastic. Everybody should be happy. Are you smiling yet? You should be smiling. All right, here we go. All right, next one. Next one, number 27. Number 27 says solid. Aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum is a three plus charge. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. We have used aluminum hydroxide before in this worksheet. That's a three and it says solid. Is mixed with a solution of sulfuric acid. We've also used sulfuric acid. So I'm gonna just blanket write that down. H2SO4, that's coming from sulfate. That's aqueous, okay? Arrow, this is a cation anion, cation anion, the classic double displacement reaction. We have aluminum and sulfate getting together. Aluminum is a three plus charge. Sulfate is a two minus charge. Aluminum is a three charge. So hopefully that works for you. Um, sulfates are aqueous except for what? Uh, barium, strontium, lead, calcium. That's aqueous. Then I'm gonna have the H and the OH, H, OH, and that forms water there. And that is a liquid. Cool. I'm gonna balance this beastie thing here. And uh, this is the most complicated thing. I got two aluminums. I'm gonna put two aluminums here, three sulfurs, three sulfurs right over there like that. And I have a total of two times three, that's six. Three times two, that's six. That is a total of 12 hydrogens. And I got two over here. I'm gonna put a six over there. And that will give me a total of... 12 hydrogens on both the reactant and the product side. All right. 
Okay, here we go. Number 28. I'm going to scoot this up here a little bit so we can uh, get moving on that. There we go. Number 28. Number 28. It says at restaurants, kids usually use a straw and blow carbon dioxide into their cup of water. So carbon dioxide, that's a gas, into their cup of water. H-O-H, that's a liquid. Okay, so the question is, what type of reaction is this? Do you think it's a double displacement? Huh? What do you think? This is a California. Is this a California? No, it says carbon dioxide. That's a prefix naming. Therefore, this is a binary molecular compound. So therefore, this cannot be a double displacement. All right? Because this is not combined in a charge ratio. This is a combination reaction. And we had done one of these before. It's the H and the nonmetal and then the oxygen. How many H's? Two. How many nonmetals? One. How many oxygens? Three. This is aqueous. This is um, a gas bubbled into water, gives you an acid. This is carbonic acid. Cool. By the way, you don't decompose this one, unlike um, maybe one of the ones in the lab that we chatted about. Okay, so that was number 28. We are moving on to 29. We are oh, moving fast now. If you have a flask containing chlorine and add it to a solution, oh, wait, solution of potassium iodide, a reaction occurs. Woohoo. Chlorine is a diatomic, it's a gas. Added to a solution of potassium, group one, iodide, halogen. So K. I, and it says solution, AQ. This is a single displacement reaction. This chlorine is a nonmetal, so therefore it will displace the anion or the nonmetal. Then you will have iodine. Iodine is diatomic, right? Hopefully everybody's got that. And iodine is a solid, plus the potassium and the chlorine are get to, gonna get together. Potassium is a one plus group one chloride is a halogen. So it's KCl and that's aqueous because that is because chlorides, bromides and iodides are soluble except for silver, mercurius and plumbus. Okay, so this is a two because there are two chlorines. This, uh, I just put a two in front of the potassium. So this must be a two right over there too. Two, two, it's a two, two, not a choo choo. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, we got that one. Hopefully we got that one. Now we are on to number 30. One way to produce a salt is to add sodium pieces to a flask containing chlorine. Sodium pieces, that's a solid, to a flask containing chlorine. That's diatomic, that's a gas. Oh my gosh, this is a combination reaction. Combination reaction, folks. Sodium is a group one, chlorine is chloride, ion is a one minus charge. So N-A-C-L, okay. Um, is this solubility rules? No, it's not because there's no water. So therefore this is a solid. Um, there's two chlorines, there's one chlorine, two chlorines and two sodiums and now two sodiums and now boom, that is balanced. That was so fast, unbelievable. Um, the following reaction of magnesium metal, magnesium metal, and oxygen occurs extremely slowly normally. Oxygen, molecular oxygen, diatomic. Everybody got that? All right. This is also a combination reaction. Magnesium is a two plus charge group two. Oxygen, the oxide ion, is a two minus. So I'm going to put this in a charge ratio of two to two, which becomes one to one. So I get MgO. Is there any water involved in this? No. So therefore, this is a solid. There's two oxygens. Now there are two oxygens. Now there are two magnesiums, two magnesiums. Notice I didn't put a two over here. You cannot change the formula once you write the correct formula. Okay, cool. And we are now on to number 32. Marble chips, aka calcium carbonate. Calcium is a group two. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion. Calcium carbonate, CO3 chips. That's a solid. It's heated in a vacuum. That's an arrow. That is a triangle. Cool. 
All right, so what do we need to do? We need to get a gas and a California. So gas possibilities is um, molecular oxygen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide. Do I see a carbon and an oxygen? Yes, so it is carbon dioxide, that's a gas. And now I need to get a California out of this. Hopefully, I'm trying to get a California. Well, I have calcium, that's a group two. That's a two plus charge for that ion. Um, carbon, I've never combined carbons in charge ratios before, so that is a no. So then the oxide is going to be a two minus charge. So I'm going to get calcium oxide. And again, there's no water involved in this, so that is going to be a solid. And um, I realize that this is actually already balanced, and I'm sorry for that, but that's just the way it is. I was just trying to get you to write products for a decomposition reaction on that one. Okay, hopefully that worked. All right. Moving on down or moving on up, however you look at that. I'm not really sure. All right, 23 grams of solid sodium chlorate. Sodium. That's a one plus cation. And chlorate is CLO and A3 is heated in an evacuated oven. This is a solid. That's an arrow. That's a delta. Okay. And solid sodium chlorate. So I'm going to get a gas. What is that gas? Oxygen gas. That's O2. And then I'm going to try to get a California. What can I get out of a California here? I can get a metal. That's sodium, one plus charge. Chloride ion. That's a one minus charge. So I'm going to get NaCl. And solubility rules? No, there's no water. So this is a solid. And we've done these before, and I've mentioned this again. There's two oxygens, three oxygens. Everything else is balanced. I'm going to put a three and a two. Now the oxygens are balanced, and now I need to balance the sodiums and the chlorines, and now those are balanced. Okay. That was number, what was that? Number 33? Okay. Next one is number 34. Hydrogen sulfide is bubbled. Hydrogen is a one plus Sulfide is a two minus, so that's H2S, and it says it's bubbled, so therefore that is most certainly a gas. Into an inverted flask containing bismuth three nitrate. Well, the Roman numeral tells you what the charge on the bismuth is, right? So that is bismuth three and then nitrate. So BI for bismuth, nitrate is NO3, and then the three charge on the um, bismuth. Um, and then all nitrates are soluble, so this should be aqueous. All right, this is a combined a cation anion, cation anion. So this is a California, California. This is a double displacement reaction. We haven't done one of these in a while. But we're going to take the hydrogen and the nitrate together. Hydrogen is a one plus charge. Nitrate is a uh, one minus charge. So I'm going to get HNO3, and that's aqueous. By the way, what do you think the name of this acid is? That is an acid, HNO3. It's a polyatomic ion acid. So that acid is nit coming from nitrate. That's nitric acid. Okay, nitric acid. Okay, to get the other product on this California, the bismuth, remember, is a three plus. The sulfide is a two minus. So I'm gonna combine the two of those together and that would be Bi2S3. And um, sulfides are insoluble except for ammonium ion and um, the alkali metals. So therefore, this is a solid, just like that. Double displacement reaction. Now I need to balance this. The um, What I would do for this one is I have two bismuth, two bismuth, three sulfurs, three sulfurs. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we can look at the hydrogens. That would probably be the easiest thing because I only have one over here. I have none in this formula, none in this formula. All the hydrogens are here. Three times two, that's six. I'm gonna put a six right there in front of that nitric acid, nitric acid. All right, cool. Uh, yep, you're watching the crazy hat chemist. We get all your... Chemistry answers answered. No, oh, wait. Chemistry questions answered. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to peel this away. And now we're going for the next page of row here. 
All right, so the next one here, number 35, it says two test tubes are simultaneously poured into a beaker, one containing a solution of zinc carbonate. Zinc is a two plus charge. And we had done this very early on in this whole deal. And there is zinc. So silver, zinc, aluminum, one, two, three, cadmium, two, zinc is a two plus charge. So zinc is a two plus charge. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion with a two plus charge. So, and it says a solution. So that means this is aqueous. So zinc carbonate is poured into um, hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid, that is a binary non-metal acid. All right, fantastic. This is gonna be a double displacement reaction because I have a cation anion and a cation anion right here, okay? All right, so the zinc and the chloride are gonna get together. Zinc, like I said, is a periodic trend charge of a two plus chloride is a halogen, that's a one minus. So ZnCl2. Okay, and uh, chlorides, bromides, and iodides are aqueous, except for silver, mercurius, and plumbus, and so therefore this is aqueous. They're like that. Plus, now I'm going to have that hydrogen get together with the carbonate, and that is H2CO3, and that is carbonic acid. That is aqueous carbonic acid. Oh, wait a second. So there's a special thing that happens here. Carbonic acid, you're going to scratch it out. What is it going to form? carbon dioxide, that's a gas, and water, that's H2O, that's a liquid. If you want the A on this test, you're going to know how to do that, and the sulfurous acid, okay? Okay, okay, um, there are two hydrogens on the product side and two chlorines on the product side, so I need to put a two in front of the um, hydrochloric acid. Okay, perfect. Hopefully that is good for you. Okay, we got one more here to do on this section. It says a gold ring, that's AU, that's a solid. It's placed in a solution of manganese 2 nitrate. Manganese is MN, not MG, nitrate, NO3, and it says it's manganese 2, and it's a solution, so that's aqueous. This is a single displacement reaction. And gold, gold will not displace anything because it's on the bottom of that activity series of like a single displacement reaction. So this is a no reaction. So you can't write products for this one. Boom, pencil drop, done. Okay, so now we have just finished 36 problems. And if you have finished these 36 problems um, and you have finished the other worksheet, and you have done all the lecture problems and you know your ions and charges and your solubility rules, you should rock this unit, okay? We have 10 more problems to do, and these 10 more problems are going to be net ionic equations. And so um, I am going to do these very quickly because we are going to follow the same pattern of which I taught you in the lecture. And in the lecture, I uh, uh, clarified all of these and said, these Net ionic equations of which we will be doing, the net ionic equations of which we will be doing, these are going to be single displacement reactions only. Okay? All right. So, silver nitrate, sodium bromide. The silver and the bromide are going to get together, and the nitrate and the sodium are going to get together. That's showing you that this is a double displacement reaction. So, you're going to ask yourself, which one of the products is a solid? Is it sodium nitrate or silver bromide? Well, sodiums are always aqueous, so it can't be this one. Or nitrates are always aqueous, so it can't be that one. Therefore, it must be silver bromide. Silver is a one plus charge. That's a periodic trend. That is coming directly from here. Silver, one plus charge. Bromide, one minus charge. One minus charge for bromide. So I should get... A, G, B, R, that's a solid. Now what we're going to do, that's our product. We're going to decompose this, if you will. So we're going to take the silver bromide, break it apart. we got a cation, that's silver, one plus. That's going to always be aqueous, plus bromide. That's a one minus, aqueous. Now, is this balanced? Yes. Done. Beautiful. All right, congratulations. Next one, barium chloride, sodium sulfate. 
And I'm hoping that you see that the barium sulfate is going to be your solid because that has sodium and that can't be it. So barium is a group two, two plus charge. Sulfate is a two minus charge. So barium sulfate, and that's a solid. I am going to now decompose this or break it apart. By the way, sulfates are aqueous except for barium, strontium, lead, which is plumbus, and calcium slightly. So cation first, that's a two plus charge, that's aqueous, plus sulfate SO4, that's a two minus charge, that's aqueous. Done. Perfect. Okay, next one is ferric chloride and calcium hydroxide. Um, okay, and it did say solution here of that, by the way. All right. So ferric hydroxide or calcium chloride? Not the calcium chloride because that's not silver, mercurius, or plumbus, so no. So therefore, it's the ferric hydroxide. So ferric is a three plus charge. Hydroxide is a one minus. Don't forget about those parentheses and that three, and that's a solid. And now what we're going to do is we're going to break this apart. We got a cation that's fer ferric aqueous plus hydroxide, OH, one minus aqueous. Now, this one is not balanced, and we need to balance this now. Okay, so three um, oxygens or three hydrogens or three hydroxides. There's one, now I have three, now it's balanced. And again, like I said in lecture, follow my lecture, read through the lecture again. This example is directly coming from the lecture. The net charge on the reactant side is zero. The net charge on the product side is also zero. So that's also a hint to knowing that this problem works. Phosphoric acid is added to sodium hydroxide until neutralization. So I'm going to write this one out just a little bit. H plus PO4, three minus, that's the hydrogen in phosphoric acid and the phosphate. And then the sodium and ion and the hydroxide ion. Okay. And then what's going to happen is the hydrogen and the hydroxide and the sodium and the phosphate are going to get together. Well, it cannot be the sodium. So then you're going to combine the hydrogen and the hydroxide. That's going to be hydrogen and the hydroxide, otherwise known as H2O. And you can write it either as H2O or HOH. That's going to be a liquid. This is not an insoluble precipitate, but it is still a double displacement reaction. And it is still um, um, uh, a net ionic equation. So hydrogen ion, that's aqueous plus a hydroxide ion. That's also aqueous. This is the net ionic equation for every single acid-base reaction. Okay, cool. You just learned something new. Um, by the way, that's pretty nifty. Barium, acetate, sodium, fluoride. Well, um, barium fluoride or sodium acetate sodium no so therefore it must be the barium fluoride barium is a group group two not a group two a group two and fluoride is a minus one charge so there that's a solid so by the way fluorides are soluble except for magnesium calcium strontium barium and plumbus Okay, so barium is a two plus, that's aqueous, and then uh, fluoride, that's a one minus, and that's aqueous. And you do need to balance this. Notice there's two fluorines, there's one fluorine, I'm going to put a two right there. Booyah! Okay, all right, number six, next one, we got ferrous iodide and calcium oxalate. Hmm, 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 hmm. So ferrous iodide or calcium, um, so ferrous oxalate or calcium iodide. And um, oxalates are insoluble. Iodides, chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble except for silver, mercurius, and lead. So it cannot be the iodide with the calcium. So therefore it must be the ferrous oxalate. So ferrous has a two plus charge. Oxalate has a two minus charge. So it's an FeC2O4 that's the solid. Okay, that's ferrous, which is a two plus. So Fe2 plus, that's aqueous. Oxalate is C2O4 and a two minus, and that's aqueous. Perfect.
Um, I believe we have only four more to do. So hold on to your pens and pencils. Here it comes. One more piece of paper and we will be done with this whole crazy thing. Okay, mercurous chlorate and ammonium bromide. So the chlorate and the ammonium are going to get together and then the mercurous and the bromide are going to get together. So um, nothing with ammonium is solid. So it must be the mercurous bromide. So mercurous is HG in that little two down there and bromide is like that. And that's the solid right on this one. Very complicated solid. That's mercurous bromide. Okay, mercurus is HG um, and a two and a two plus, that's aqueous. And then there are two bromides. So two BR minus one, and that's aqueous. Sorry if that's getting a little bit sketchy right there, but that's what that is. All right, next one is plumbic nitrate with potassium chromate. So the plum potassium nitrate or the plumbic chromate. Well, can't be nitrates. So it's not potassium either. So it must be plumbic chromate. So plumbic, that's a four plus chromate, C-R-O-4-2 minus. So look at that very carefully and you'll see what this C-R-O-4 with a two outside, that's the solid. Okay, and then plum... Bit. That's a four plus charge. That's a aqueous. And then we're going to have two chromate, CRO4, um, two minus, and that's aqueous. Notice that the net charge on both the reactant and product side is zero. Okay. Ammonium sulfate and strontium perchlorate. So ammonium and perchlorate, that's a no because ammonium does not form anything. And then we have strontium sulfate. And so sulfates are aqueous except for barium, strontium, lead, and calcium. So it's strontium, which is a group two sulfate, SO4, two minus. So that's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's a solid. And be careful on this because strontium is a two plus. That's aqueous. And Sulfate is a two minus, and that's aqueous, okay? Notice that the two charges disappeared. Why? Because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Yeah, cool. All right, last problem. I'm so excited. I'm almost done doing this. Potassium carbonate with cuprous chloride. So potassium chloride or cuprous um, carbonate. Well, potassium, that's a nope. So it must be the cuprous carbonate. Cuprous. Go back to our wonderful periodic table. And cuprous is right there. It's a one plus charge for the cuprous. And then the carbonate is um, a two minus charge. So cuprous carbonate. Solid. Cuprous. One plus charge, aqueous, plus carbonate, CO3, two minus, that's aqueous. And we need to balance this, and that goes a two right there. Booyah! And um, I believe that is a wrap. And we are done. And I am the crazy hat chemist, and I am crazy just for going over all those problems, but I most certainly help. I hope it was helpful to you. All righty. I will see you next time. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch my videos and uh, tell all your friends, your relatives about my videos. Would appreciate it. All right. Talk to you later. Bye now.